In this short tutorial, I'll provide a basic description of the vapour compression refrigeration cycle, which is used in most HVAC mechanical cooling systems. This may be useful for modellers who are less familiar with the refrigeration elements of HVAC systems, as it will help put some of the data inputs for refrigeration components into context. I'll start by briefly explaining how the basic vapour compression refrigeration cycle used in most HVAC systems works and the relationship between the key system components. The diagram shows the system components overlaid on a pressure enthalpy diagram with pressure here on the y axis and enthalpy along the x-axis. To the right of this saturation line here, the refrigerant is a saturated vapour, i.e. a gas. And to the left of the saturation line on this side, the refrigerant is a saturated liquid. Between the lines within this dome, the refrigerant is a mixture of saturated liquid and vapour, varying according to the pressure and enthalpy at any point. The closer the refrigerant gets towards this saturated vapour line, the greater the saturated vapour component, i.e. the drier the mix. Starting here at point 1, the refrigerant is at a relatively low pressure, has a relatively low enthalpy and has a low vapour fraction, i.e. is mostly in its liquid state. The evaporator here is the heat exchanger component which enables the refrigerant to absorb heat. In a normal HVAC context, this could be the evaporator in a chiller, which supplies chilled water to the cooling coils in the HVAC system, but could also be the cooling coil in a zone terminal unit, such as a direct expansion package terminal air conditioner. As the refrigerant passes through the evaporator in this system, it absorbs heat from the chilled water, which is used to evaporate the liquid refrigerant. As the refrigerant absorbs this energy, its enthalpy level increases until it becomes completely gaseous. The dry refrigerant is then compressed between points 2 and 3, which increases both its pressure and temperature, resulting in a further increase in enthalpy. The high temperature and pressure gas is then passed through a condenser between points 3 and 4 where it rejects heat either to water or air in another heat exchanger. The cooling and enthalpy reduction redu results in the refrigerant returning to its liquid state here at point 4. The liquid is then passed through an expansion device which reduces the pressure of the refrigerant and returns it to a low pressure liquid gas mix which can be used again to absorb heat from the evaporator. In the chilled water loop all these components may be included within the chiller. However, direct expansion systems such as split and packaged units may have these components in different locations with the evaporator as the room terminal unit absorbing heat and the condenser unit located externally rejecting heat to the outside air. This cycle may also be reversed in a heat pump to reject the heat of compression to the conditioned space. This tutorial is only intended to provide some basic background information. Now that we've covered that, the next tutorial will introduce chilled water loops in Design Builder.